games. All right. Here we go. James is joining. Am good I in? morning, buddy. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Like Feels like a, a London morning outside. Rainy and chilly. And I know. I like it. Does it remind nice. you of home? I mean, it's kind of good for this time as well. It's a good, it's a good yeah. reason to stay inside, isn't it? It is. It is completely. Um, are you, you're in your studio. Yeah, I am. Yeah, so yeah. how have you been Relax. doing? To have it. I'm good, man. Um, speaking of, for myself, um, it's it's definitely an interesting time. I think um, no one's ever experienced this, so we're. I think we're all just trying to figure out what to do, how to do it, how to take it, how to accept it. Is it real? How long? The uncertainty. Yeah. So I think we just need to all remember that we're in it together. So no, there is that, and um, well, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It is really crazy. It's good to see your face. You too, man. Good hair, man. You have the best hair. I My hair is so long right now. I don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> the same. I haven't cut mine in about seven months. So. We can't. I've got another month at least. <laughs> I'm like, it's, yeah. I know. I, 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 know. I think for the first time I've realized like I've got, I've got some mad hair now. <laughs> I've got, I've got well, a lot of hair to give. <laughs> you have great hair, great energy. So for everybody just joining, um, the thinking of our call series is really to give people an opportunity to meet artists and experts that that love art, that are passionate for art. And um, I'm excited to bring James Goldcrown on today because not only do we love his big murals, his love walls are so inspirational for you know hundreds of thousands of people that have seen these murals all over, but now we have an opportunity to go in his studio, talk to him, you guys can ask questions. So submit your questions and then we'll answer those as we go along. But I'm worried um, about some of my friends joining. Yeah, well. And what stupid things they're going to write. We'll keep it pretty kid friendly. Yeah. So um, PG guys. All, like, tell tell us about you. I mean, I I know your backstory, but I know you you were born in in London, South London, yeah. and. No, I was born in West London, actually. Get it or right. West London. Sorry. <laughs> very, very offensive, man. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> I was born in West London, moved here uh, 2007. And I only came here for like a weekend, kind of like a, just to check it out. Ended up staying for three months on my tourist visa. Went mm -hmm. back to London. Felt like I wasn't, something was missing from my life. And then I got another ticket to come back to, I like, scrounged up some money. Um, came back to New York and then I just remember like as the plane like touched down at JFK I just felt that um, sense of being and just where I needed to be and I was like I need to be here and mm -hmm. I've been here since um, in the States and I love it here it's a very interesting country um, crazy mm -hmm. and it's a very exciting place for a foreigner to come I think that's why we're all trying to get over here but it's it, it's it's given me a lot. And um, yeah, I started selling art on the streets, really. And yeah, but even before that, you were a filmmaker. So you started out in film, right? Or no, fashion. I was in, You're a fashion I did, photographer. Yeah, I was like working. I came over here initially. I got finally got a, gre um, a green card. So I came over and I was working for um, Dazed and Confused magazine and a studio in uh, Midtown. So I was doing a lot of uh, backstage fashion photography and still doing a lot of art but that was you know i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do i was young i was in my 20s and i think you're trying to f i think your 20s is really a good time for you to figure out what you want to do yeah i think kids sure. these days are just like on another level with social media they're all like branding themselves from the age of four but um i think yeah in those days which i feel like we're kind of in now it's just kind of a good time i feel like it's interesting, I was saying to my wife last night, I feel like um, we're living in an era now where it's kind of like we're in the 90s. Like, we, we can't do anything. It's like we've been given less choice, but we have all this yeah. social media that we can use. Back to the so basics. We've gone back to the future kind of thing. So yeah, it's an interesting time. It's like, uh, I kind of like it in a sense. Personally speaking, I'm, 
I'm an extrovert and I love to go out, but I'm kind of enjoying this kind of like staying at home. It's weird. I can't really explain it, but yeah. I feel like this is the closest we're ever going to get to go yeah, back I to like that time before all this craziness happened. Yeah, I hear you. Um, and it happened like that. It was like one day just everything went. We just lost it, all our privileges. It, it's, it's insane how quickly our lives have changed, all of us. Um, yeah. So you, so you came from England to the States and, and I remember like seeing your work as a street artist. I mean, you were, you were, we were introduced to a mutual friend and Correct. then we connected and then I really loved your work. And I remember going to the first exhibition that you had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember. Yeah. That was in, was that I think Florida? I met you for the first time, um, upstate though. Um, Hannah was like raced, like she went to some horse thing and then you oh, were yeah. with i met you at lunch we had lunch it was yes, in what was it called again that I forgot about that. we were out that, at the horse show it wasn't a horse show but it was um I'm trying to remember the name of the area you did like an exhibition for me up there once and i couldn't make it oh in westchester yeah in westchester near there it was that kind of area okay god i've slept since then um yeah. we've done so many things you're coming well, to me you're coming with... to me then we then we decided to do well i was doing a show at our basil and then you know our our paths crossed again and that was where it back. really started yeah yeah that was fun yeah i mean in our basil it was a lot of fun with you because you actually helped get the art down there with me and that, that was, was like a, a different yeah that was crazy that crazy was, time we, we drove 27 hours to miami <laughs> with a truck and i actually lied to the guy i was with because i didn't want to stop so I drove six hours illegally. <laughs> I never told you that. I just no, that's okay. There. And All I, just I care wanted... is the, uh -huh. the art got down there safely, and you know we exhibited. I exhibited, you know, a group of artists, and James, obviously, you were you were one of them. But but as soon as the show opened, as soon as the exhibition opened, James's work sold out. I mean, pretty quickly. I mean, we sold True. all of the pieces or. We did, and then and, we got commissions, which was great as well. So yeah, it that started. Was real I mean, thrill. That it was, was when I kind of, I was broke, and it was I was just happy to just be a part of it. And I just remember, I had you made I made some money, and I was like, whoa! And I, I went back to New yeah. York and had like a bit of change, and that was they were good times. Those were the fun days, like the hustle. We would I was. Those were yeah. Those were like back in the day. That was you a long still time are ago. hustling though. I mean, that was a fun time. I am, you but was, you were still I, trying to figure out kind of your direction. But I'm definitely. I but you know what? I don't, I'm not hustling like I used to hustle, like the old school hustle, when I was on the streets selling from the truck and like in the streets, just like talking to complete strangers, like making people buy art which they didn't need, and it, that was the mm -hmm. thrill. It was just kind of like closing a deal. And just, yeah, that was, the, those were the fun times, just like rocking up anywhere in New York, like in Dumbo yeah. or West Side. And just, um, yeah, that was a lot of fun, man. I had a lot of fun back then. So everybody wants to know, you know, how did you come up with the idea of the heart and the love theme? Um, I didn't really, I mean, it was, you know, a heart, I can't really take credit for creating a heart. Um, I just... <laughs> For me personally, there's a lot of other artists that will claim that. Oh, you're delayed. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. And okay. th there's a Say lot of other No, that like, I can't really take credit for like creating a heart. Like, you know, the heart's been around for a long time. There's a lot of other artists that also have been but doing. But the way that you do it, your process yeah, I mean, is really unique. This is if I can be honest with you, I have no idea anyone else was doing it. It was completely just me spray painting to doodle. It was just testing out the pressure of a can. Um, mm -hmm. No one even knew what I was doing because no one, we weren't even using social media at that point. And then it was just really when it kind of blew up, then suddenly everyone else gets in your business and like tries to take claim for what you've oh, yeah. done. I get it. And I then I started it. to realize like there were angry people and whatnot. But I, I just, um, I was very lucky. I, I did a mural in New York in 2015. And basically, I got to use a wall that was very high foot traffic area. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really know what I was doing or what I was getting myself into. And I did it. And then it just went viral. And a, a lady called Eva Chen, who worked for Facebook, um, 
she posted it and then it just took off from there really and then my life kind of really changed from me cold calling everyone and seeing if people wanted to still buy art and hustling yeah. and then the phone calls reversed and it was a slow thing at the beginning but then all the brands and all the clients would follow from that and it became it was crazy i mean if i was i, I was thinking about this this morning like if i was me eight years ago i would be so screwed right now <laughs> I, would, I don't know what i'd do i'd be like i would i'd definitely not be able to pay my rent yeah so, it's all I'm about the relationships i mean you you built a, a name for yourself but it, you've also built some amazing connections in the process so mm. where was that first mural that you did that was in new york in soho at a old pizza spot called Lasso, which was on okay. Kenmore Street. And okay, I, remember uh, that. I just, I remember it so clearly, like my friend Mehdi, who was like, he works in a great restaurant called Balzem. So if you're in New York, you should all support his restaurant, Balzem. They're doing takeout, really good food. Yeah, so, big shout out for New York. We love New York. Big shout out for the guys in New York. But um, yeah. so yeah, Mehdi would, we were like, just to, like he would come around and we'd all just like hang out. And it was, I, I didn't, it was just a lot of fun. It was just painting this big mural and just had fun with it. My friends would stop by, people in the street take photos. And it was like really the first of a lot that I've done. And it becomes a different feeling after a while. Um, you just kind of want to get it done. Like it gets to a point where you kind of just want to finish your project now. Of Back course. in the day I was like, hey, how are you? You know, yeah. now I'm just like, oh God, I just need to, I need, I've got so much to do. Not trying to sound ungrateful, but I'm, well, I'm not moody, have, but I'm an artist. It's, it's a good problem, but you've worked hard to get to this point is the whole, is the whole. I point. have. Yeah. People and you also great. have I've a wife smart. and you have I've a baby. Had, huh? Yeah, I have a little boy yeah. now. Yeah. Jagger's what? He's a year old now, right? He's near, he'll be two in October. Two already? Oh my God. My sister and my mum have just logged in. Okay. Hi, Hello. sister and mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. How are you doing? How are you holding out? I'm good. You know, I've been more creative and, you know, this time alone has given me an opportunity to come up with something like this and yeah. find new idea. ways to reach out to my collectors and reach out to artists that I love and, you know, reconnect in a different way. You know, we don't yeah. have a human human connection and luckily we have technology that we can do things like this so i know we're very lucky to live in us personally i think we're lucky to be as developed technically as we are now to be going through what we are um but it's still crazy it's like not the social wow. I'm, i i think for me personally at the beginning of all this i was in denial or like not respecting it not mm -hmm. taking it seriously enough and now it's got to a point where it's like okay people yeah. need to get this you know we need to really step up the game and you need, I, I think it really needs to be critical that people wear masks in supermarkets absolutely oh i go wear, masks, right. wear your gloves yeah and yesterday for instance we had to do a food run which i tried to really not do i was in my the, i would go to the supermarket every day at the beginning of this is all i had to do i was just i love food i love shopping for food. and you were walking around the streets giving us tours of I remember your Insta stories of nobody's on the street and you had yeah, the commentary. Yeah, I was talking to dog, though. I wasn't looking for trouble. I, I wasn't trying to <laughs> provoke people into being like, what an idiot. So, like, I had to walk my dog and I had to get to my studio, but I'd just yeah. be silly and make fun out of things because I'm stupid and I make fun out of things. But, um, yeah, I, I think um, it's got to the point now where it's kind of, it feels like a big detention. Like, we're all in detention. Mm -hmm. And it's like, we need to start being a bit more serious. And until we, we kind of all come together, like we're all in this together. And it's until we really Absolutely. start to understand the fact that, you know, even if like London, England and other countries like stop doing what they, you know, it all fixes there. If America doesn't sort itself out, people can't come here and we can't leave here. So it's really just, um, you know, we need to really step it up a bit, I think. You know? oh, absolutely. Respect well, other people. It's, it's selfish not to abide by what we're meant to be doing. I think that's really what people need to understand. You, you're being a bit selfish going into supermarkets without wearing a mask now. Absolutely. It's, it's at Even that in, point, you know? in California, I think, and what is it, on Friday, I think tomorrow, Locally. they can refuse, yeah, they can refuse you do, to do business with them unless you're wearing a mask or, or some kind Good. of protective face yeah. attire. So, um, 
So let's go back to you a little bit. Um, what would you say was your biggest obstacle as an artist to get started? Because uh, we also, we have artists on here, we have kids on here, we have people that are, you know, want to uh, be creative well, at home, think, but. I think just keep going. You know, I can only speak from my own experience. And my experience is like, I left school when I was 16 years old. I threw myself into a decision. I didn't, my, you know, my mom worked really hard to help my sister and me. Um, mm -hmm. We came from, you know, my mom basically did everything. So I owe her a lot. She really believed in me as well. And it was just really, when I left school, my mom told me I had to get a job. So I got a job and I mm -hmm. chose to go work in a dark room. That was yeah. kind of like a friend of the family's could help me out and give me a position. Um, it was very low pay back in those days, but um i kind of just went and i felt for me school wasn't for me so i would i didn't really want to i felt like i would learn better in an environment that interested me as well so that's how i got a good education in what i was doing it's not for everyone and in england as well school isn't as it's not as seen upon as it is in the states i feel like in america it's like there's so much stigma if you don't go to school here you're like you're considered like low class or stupid or you can't get you're told you can't do things in life if you don't go to school um it's different in england anyway cut a long story short so i started working and i just really did that for a very long time and um yeah so questions so questions are coming up here uh, will this time of uncertainty and sadness have an influence on your work? Will a new vocabulary appear? Say what? You see that? I'm just reading some of these so, things. With, with this time of uncertainty and sadness um, have an influence on your work right now? Has it changed through um, what we're going through right now? Have you changed I, any perspective I, 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 or focus? I, I think I... Well, at the very beginning of this, I didn't really have any creativity in me. Like I was finding it really hard to motivate myself to go to the studio. I've got a lot of commission work I'm doing right now. So I've been very lucky in that respect. And I've been able to focus on that. Still doing a lot of my commercial stuff as well. Some of it's been kind of slowed down a little bit just because of um, the way the um, economy's like slowed down and the industries have slowed down as well. Um, but I've been busy, but I've just found it very hard to motivate myself at the very beginning. I felt, um, I think a lot of people who are creatives could probably agree. Um, I just felt like uninspired and just with right. nothing. I wasn't, I felt kind of trapped. I wasn't allowed to well, go What was out. the unknown? We, yeah, we didn't know. Yeah, it was, and it it was just, like a oh, bombshell. Like I'd go to my program. studio and I just felt very... Um, just like I couldn't start anything. I just felt, even though I had things to do, I just felt- kind of paralyzed. Yeah, I had no energy to do it. And now I'm starting to get through it and realize that, you know, it's just the way I am as well. It's just, I need to travel, I need to do things to, in order for me to be stimulated. But- um, One of the things, obviously the, the, the love walls are something that a lot of people have seen, but you also have done, have done these, uh, these neons. So with, with some of the yeah. phrases that I think are really beautiful. So maybe maybe some new vocabulary in the neons, perhaps? Yeah, I'm working on a few abstract pieces right now, like a bit of other stuff um, as well, which I'm going to post later. And I'm also going to do something quite cool. I think I told you on the phone the other day, I'm going to start like, um, I'm going to do like um, next week or the week after. I'm just waiting for some canvases to come in. But... I'm going to be doing um, like a silent auction, like a very affordable mm -hmm. auction. I just want to like do something so people can feel like they're getting involved in stuff as well. So I'm going to do a painting a day and then you can bid for it. It starts very low. And then by That's midnight, awesome. whoever bids the highest gets the painting. That's very sweet. And it just gives awesome. people an opportunity to buy affordable art as well. Um, yeah. Well, during this time, fine. it's a way for you to give well. back. And it's just, stuff for people to get involved in you know i think we're all just we want to do things and we want to like yeah it's it's weird it's a very weird time so talk to us about some of the projects that you can publicly discuss at this time i mean it, and and the diversity between the murals that you have planned versus the commissions that you have coming up yeah i don't know if i'm allowed to discuss um it sounds so stupid I've got something coming up with a pretty big company. 
Um, they're quite global, but I don't know if I can mention them yet because we're still <laughs> doing everything. Um, but there's something that's really cool. It's coming out. Um, it's an apparel. So I would, there'll be some give outs and stuff like that. Um, there's the Marcel wine, drink Marcel, the rosé. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be giving out some free bottles tomorrow, announcing the winners for that. If you go to my page, you could still okay. enter that. Um, bunch of commissions I'm doing. Um, so I'm working. I mean, I'm pretty, it's, it's fine. I'm busy. I'm, I'm very lucky to be busy. Um, there's a few other things, a few murals that I'm doing around LA um, mm -hmm. that I've got going on that I'm just, we're yes. just working out the logistics just with the scissor lifts and stuff like that. Everything. The one, out on, the one in Beverly Hills at Alfred's. I mean, I pass that one all the time. I love that one. And you and my changed that recently. just said I can't, so I can't. Thank God I didn't mention them. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, um, well, that's a really, really prominent one. Um, and um, I'm trying to think where else. I mean, as you go down, I mean, on Melrose, you, you, Rag and Bone. I mean, when you when you drive past Rag and Bone and you see the hearts there. Yeah. I love that. That's coming um, down soon, actually. Um, it's been, it's okay. been up there for like nearly three years, so I was very happy with that. It's cool. That's amazing. But yeah, that they've been a great partnership. I love working with Rag and Bone. They're great. Everyone there's great. Everyone yeah. that I've worked with throughout that whole uh, project, they've been great. Yeah. But that's so that. we have somebody on here that says, "My students love your work. Thank you for inspiring young artists." And I mean, you are really an inspiration for for kids out there, big kids, young kids. Yeah, you know, whatever. And how how has it impacted your work now having Jagger in your life? I think having Jagger is it's just made um it's interesting. So I think now like it's more everything I do is for him. Like just the rewards of what I do are like for his mm -hmm. future. So I think what anyone that's a parent can really relate to this. I think you just want them to have a good life. So it's important that you continue to do what you're doing yeah. and try and make, you know, it's not an easy thing to be an artist and to make money and to have a career from doing this. It's a very rare job. It's not normal. Yeah, and sure. I'm aware of all of those things. And, you know, I've been doing this again, like I said, since I was 16 years old, I've been working and I've, that's all I know is how to work. And so if this didn't work out, I'd find something else. I know that because I'm just... <laughs> Like, I don't give up. Keep it's going. working but, out. It's working out. It's working out. It's worked out. I know, yeah. yeah. But um, I just, you've always got to think, <laughs> you've always got to think worst case scenario, when, especially when you've got of a course. kid, you know. So now it's just really um, making smart moves financially, um, things that don't, it's just being selfless. It's about really doing things that benefit your, your future for your child and your family to give them the stability. Yeah. Can, can we see a little bit of the studio? Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Can you take us around a bit? Look, I've got this jumper from this company called Vibes, and I've already ruined it today. Oh, nice. Nice. Oh. It looks good. So, like these are the neons. This is my bike I bought. I'm very proud of my bike. Um, <laughs> it's, my, it's my, like, local exercise. But, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. in here, but, um, these are yeah, show prints. us the neons. These are the prints we're doing. This is, like, a little... I've been doing this new piece here, but it's just the layers right now. You can't really see it. So it's coming on. It's more abstract -y than amazing neons here. Everything's backwards here on the phone. It's here. There it is. What do they, what do they say? What do they say? That says, I effing love you. Okay. It's very early in the morning to fully tell you. <laughs> this says, baby, baby, baby. Okay. This is, you're out of this world. Oops. Okay. This is called a thin line between love and hate. So it's okay. like love letters and hate nice. letters. Nice. It's about bad relationship and a good relationship. We all have and, been there. Yeah. I get that. So it's, this is the studio. Nice. So I'm Love also it. aware that I'm very lucky to have a space of work, you know, that I can go to. And um, of, of all the colors that you're using, what would you say? Is your Hi, what paint do you, color do you use? Hi, <laughs> okay. What paint color do you use the most of? What paint color do I use the most? <laughs> I like magenta, yeah. which is like pink red, pinky red. Um, and I really like this, this color called um, 
like it's kind of a cyan color, like between green and blue. I feel like that and magenta and yellow, they work very well. Those are like my three go-tos. Um, but yeah, I, I'm... There. It's learning color. It's how to mix color to like use the right colors to get a visual. Because yeah. a lot of people cannot do that very well sometimes. No disrespect. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the other thing I wanted to end kind of the call to say James works by commission right now. I mean, he, he sells so quickly that, you know, he really doesn't carry much of an inventory. So if you have inquiries, if you want to have a commission done, either reach out to me or James and we can help you with through that process. And then James and I are, I think, going to be working on some things coming up. Um, after this kind of settles down. So we'll circle back uh, with you about that. Yeah. And James, is there anything else you want to you talk about? Any shout out to anybody out there? Um, I don't know. Just like I hope everyone's doing all right. And just everyone needs to just uh, relax, stay home. This is a good time. Because you know what? You're going to go back to work and complain. So just enjoy this while you still you know, can. Really good point. And I think what we need to really remember is remembering this as well, because we're very forgetful. We get very back into our ways and we just forget what's important. So I think we need to really, really learn. I just hope we learn from this and that we can understand that, um, you know, the planet really needs to be taken care of as well as we do. And it's a very important like lesson. This yeah. should really be a very good lesson for us all because this is something that we've all experienced together. And, you know, we should really, really learn about this and really, really not, I really want everyone to come away more positive and like just better in a sense. It's not going to happen for everyone, but I just hope that we can all learn the best from this, you know, and be kinder to oh, each other. Okay. The next time you're at a restaurant and they tell you there's a 30 minute wait, you wait, you're good for it. Yeah. This is good training. <laughs> A good point you know i do a grateful exercise every morning if i before i get out of bed i think of five things that i'm grateful for and it, it has to be something or i try to think of something different than i haven't thought of before and yeah. that's a new new practice that i've been doing and i think to your point it is an amazing opportunity for us all to to go inward to really re realize that our health our family our relationships are so important and all the other BS that's around us. I mean, it's really, you know, it's it's it yeah. just changed all of our perspective in a in a good way. It's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how we get back into society, like how we go back into life, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to be hopefully more it's, gentle. It's something we've all got in. Co this is like. This is the the biggest thing the world has in common, you know, that we all have as like nations in common. Like there's nothing that we, Absolutely. this is the most experienced thing on the planet that we've ever gone through together. So hopefully mm -hmm. we can all kind of like understand each other a bit. We all, we're all dealing with this in very different ways. You know, there's some people, I, I'm just very fortunate. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are not working right now and it's very concerning for them, you know, and I'm very, I hope they're doing okay, and it's very hard sure, to talk to them about it because you don't want to you don't want to say the wrong thing. But you know, it's not easy. Not everyone's having the same experience. There's a lot of people that yeah. are very stressed. There's a lot of people that are getting by. So I think we've all got to just understand the different levels of what people are going through and, and respect that as well because we're not all on the same page exactly, but we're all on the same page in some respect, you know? We're in the yeah, same no, book, we're just not in no. the same chapter. Yeah, and, and also I think everybody out there, I mean, reach out to your friends and family. Even if I have certain friends that have gone into their dark space and I still reach out to them, they not, may not respond to me after a day or two, but finally they'll respond yeah. and they're like, thank you so much for reaching out to me. And I, I've tried to make an extra effort with certain people that are kind of putting up walls and... I think, yeah, I think that that's a good point as well. I think also what we need to respect is people are getting depressed right now. There's a, probably a lot of depression going on between people. People probably don't want to be spoken mm -hmm. to. People want to be like, just deal with it in their own way. So 
you know, if you're reaching out to your friends and they're not responding to you, it's not because they don't like you. They're probably just going through a little something right now. It's like, it's a very, it can be a very lonely, lonely time for some people. And it's also a lot of people are stressed, like we were just saying, financially, and just with everything yeah. that's going on around them, you know, it's not easy. This is a Absolutely. very difficult it's moment. It's everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, I just, like I said earlier, I just hope we can all walk away and learn and be more respectful to our planet and to ourselves and just respect people, their cleanliness as well, you know. This, this is real. This yeah. is, uh, yeah. Absolutely right. Well, thank you for coming on the call. Thank you for, you know, inspiring us all with your beautiful work. And we're, I'm excited to see what what's to come after all of this and in the near and long long term. Yeah, uh, definitely. You're a great person, and and I miss well, seeing why you. Don't we, why don't seeing we? Why don't we? Why don't we catch up in a in a week or so, in like a couple of weeks, and see how everything is and. Okay. Um, I can, might be able that. to tell you who that, that brand is as well. <laughs> okay, let's do that. All right, All right you perfect, heard it here yeah. first. We'll do it in a couple of weeks. All, All right, right. matey. Um, All right, mate. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. You Stay too. Healthy. Stay safe, everyone yeah. out there as well. And, um, All right, everybody. Thank you for joining. I'll pop this up on, the, uh, on my story right now so you guys can watch it again. Bye. Thanks, Bye, James. Yeah. Bye, mate. Bye.